Welcome to the Living Ageless and Bold podcast. Each episode, I bring you amazing women who inspire, educate, and share their experiences and journeys along the way. So grab a glass of wine or a cup of coffee, find a cozy spot, and let's relax and have some fun hearing what can be accomplished after 55. Ladies, we are in for a treat today. If you are like me and not sure what appropriate fashion is um, for a woman woman over 55, you have a 20-something-year-old daughter like I do, and sometimes you see you're wearing the same thing and don't know if that's good or bad, we're going to get all of our questions answered today with fashion stylist Tanya Sterl of Sterl on Style. Welcome, Tanya. Thank you, Christina. Happy to be here. Oh, my gosh. So I have seen your work firsthand um, with Cindy Ashton, the things that you have put together for her. You helped me with some things. I'm just excited to get all of our questions answered. But uh, I always like to go back and, you know, tell the story of how you got where you got to, because I'm finding we have a lot of younger people listening. And if we can just inspire one person to maybe make a career shift to realize that they're not stuck in what they're doing forever. Um, so let's talk about your stylist today, but how did you start out? Yeah, well, I, uh, fashion stylist today is correct. Um, right before this, that I launched Sterling Style 10 years ago this year. It's my 10 year anniversary of launching my business. Congratulations. Thank you. I worked in the fashion industry as a fashion designer. So I think I need to go like even back, right? Because we're always evolving and we're always shifting and pivoting and changing. So from fashion designer to fashion stylist, but really before I moved to New York City to pursue fashion, I grew up in the suburbs of Chicago. Very modest beginnings, very humble beginnings. Uh, But my parents saw that I was a very creative child. I would design clothes for my Barbie dolls. I would design Wait, clothes. how appropriate that Barbie is <laughs> celebrating 60 right now and with the big yes. relaunch. Uh, so that's, oh, I would have loved, and you probably don't have any of those left, do you? That would be iconic right now. I know. I wish I did. I'll have to yeah. ask my mom if she has them stored in the house somewhere. Oh, wow. In a trunk. Uh, yeah, you're wearing your Barbie pink today. I'm wearing my Barbie okay. pink today. Yeah. Barbie was uh, definitely influential for me growing up. Yeah. I explored who I could be come through Barbie. My Barbies were rock stars, fashion designers, Love fashion it. designers for rock stars. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, who's Ken? Um, but really, I grew up a very creative child. Um, and I was lucky to have parents that recognized that and supported that. Yeah. So from my humble beginnings in the Midwest, I always knew I wanted to end up in New York City pursuing fashion design. I remember in high school, one of my favorite teachers asked us to write a composition on someone who changed our life. And for me, it was supermodel Linda Evangelista. Do you remember the supermodels from the 90s, Christina? (laughs) I'll tell you a quick funny story, and I hope to get her on. Uh, I went to high school uh, with Megan Douglas, who was one of the top models of the 90s she's her sister's my age she's a year younger she graced every magazine cover uh so yes i am very familiar that was my time of you know models and and seeing that so very familiar with linda evangelista i love that so those are my early influences being in high school i was actually kind of an odd one out i was very creative i didn't follow the crowd i cut and dyed my own hair i made my own clothes Honestly, then I got bullied for it, for looking different, but I didn't let it, you know, I looked at Linda Evangelista in those fashion magazines with her, you know, her prominent nose and which after she cut her hair short is when she got famous. It would be blonde. It would be red. It would be jet black. So she is definitely one of my main influences of pursuing modeling and fashion design. So I did make it to New York City, uh, studied at FIT did modeling, pursued fashion design. And it was later in my fashion design career that I started to travel to do trunk shows with the collection that I was designing for. So before that, you know, being right hand, you know, creative director, right alongside creative director and women owned business, 
I was very much behind the scenes as the fashion designer until we took the collection on the road. Then I was interacting and interfacing one-on-one with the clientele. So everyone from, I mean, the, the fashions we were designing ended up in magazines and more magazine. It ended up on the Fox News team. It ended up on Deborah Norville of Inside Edition. So, so exciting. How cool is that, that you flip on your TV and you see Deborah Norville and you're like, I designed that. Yes. It was very gratifying and very satisfying. Yeah. And that comes full circle with, why do I love fashion? I love fashion for the confidence it gives that woman when it's just right. When the cut, the color, the shape, the mood of the attitude of what you're wearing completely integrates with like who and how you are, you can show up on TV looking and feeling your most confident self. You can show up for that photo shoot, interview. Um, oh my gosh, walk into that boardroom with that confidence. So from fashion design and, and knowing I loved and pursued that, once I was doing trap shows, I saw the transformation that women would go through when they first walked into store, you know, just in their sweatpants yeah. and like, oh, I'm a real estate agent. I'm on my feet all day. Make me look good. And no matter what size, shape, color they were, I was able to style them from head to toe. I'll never forget this one woman, the real estate agent, yeah. you know, walked in with her sweatsuit and I was asking the salespeople, can you also grab that, you know, that shoe and that bag and that jewelry? And her self-perception changed. Her posture was straighter, how she looked at herself back in the mirror when her outfit was just right head to toe. And I said, that's why I love fashion. The power it gives a woman to feel the most confident she can feel. So that's when I made the pivot and the change from fashion to uh, fashion stylist, personal stylist for private clients. And I love that your whole platform is embracing that confidence, how fashion makes you feel. And, and you're absolutely right. Er- everybody listening knows this. You put something on, you're feeling kind of frumpy. Your whole day is kind of like, oh, you know, I don't. But you, you put something on and you feel good. Wow. It's like, I'm going to take on the world. All right. So let's talk about, um, because the whole premise of this podcast is that, you know, we're not our mother's 50. We're not our grandmother's 50. Like this is the healthiest, wealthiest, most fit generation ever in history. Um, I am 56 years old and I'm still wearing a bikini. I'll bite a little bit higher over my belly, but, um, but I feel comfortable in it, which, you know, not that long ago, that was taboo. You know, a woman in her 50s should never wear a bikini. So let's talk about what's acceptable for women. And, and I get it. We write our own book. We write our own chapter. But in general with fashion, you know, what should women over 50, 55 be thinking in with their fashion sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love what you said about, you know, once you hit 50, it's like you're writing your own book. Because I remember turning 50 last year and I was celebrating in St. Thomas and these women were there at the resort and they started to buy me, you know, drinks and shots. And they were like, Welcome to the club, honey. The yep. best thing about turning 50 is you don't give a crap anymore about what everyone else, you know, thinks. So I think you're right, Christina. We are living in such a new and different day and age. Does ageism still exist? Yes. Yeah. But we women, one woman at a time, is saying, you know, to quote Barbie, don't put me in a box. <laughs> <laughs> It's don't uh, put limits on me. Don't put rules on me. It, we are at a point in our careers and in our lives where we're the most successful. We've gained the most mm-hmm. experience. We've become this whole person. Our 20s is like, oh my gosh, we're new to working and we think we know what our job is. 30s is like, okay, a little more confident than I was before, but maybe then that you're exploring the next level of that career. Then 40s is either you're pursuing that same one or you're writing your life more on your own terms because you have more confidence than ever. You know yourself. So I think it's not so much about like 
you know, oh, become better, be someone better. It's we become more whole. We know ourselves more than we ever have. So what better way to showcase who we are than through our style and our fashion choices and how we decide to present ourselves to the world? So I agree with you, Christina. I get these interviews a lot. It's like, well, what are your number one tips and rules <laughs> yes. for women over 50? And it's like, first of all, you know, there are no rules. Break the rules. But I will say this. What I've noticed with um, my private clients that I style, I style everyone from partners of law firms to women delivering their TEDx talks to women after divorce and they're getting their confidence yeah. back and putting themselves out there in a new way. You know, to you mentioned uh, Cindy Ashton and women who are on stage in the public eye and performing. It really comes down to your own uh, sense of self, your own personal preferences. What I've noticed a lot with women over 50, we don't need to prove ourselves as much, if that makes sense. Yes, we're still allowed to wear a bright color, but I noticed that women, some women will go through this phase of what they're calling right now the quiet luxury phrase, neutral colors, monotone color from head to toe, more sophisticated, less busy prints. Like, it's very interesting. I've got one of my clients and is an executive level coach. She let her hair go gray yeah. during the pandemic. She chose and not to dye it anymore and she just owned it. So it's a hard question to answer. Like, are there any set rules or the, are there any? Really, I think the rules are to redefine yourself on your terms, but use your style and fashion to showcase who you are, to celebrate who you are, to dress, to express this new age and this new era of your of this decade you're stepping into. So what do you recommend? You know, obviously, we would all love to hire you. But let's say, you know, I, I'm not in a position where I can hire a stylist. What What are kind of my first steps to figure out me in my 50s? You know, all of a sudden, your kids are gone. You're really successful in your career and you're kind of waking up with an aha moment. It's like, hey, I want to start, I want to start dressing for success. I want to start dressing the part. I, I don't have to wear sweatpants. I can if I want to. Uh, but you know, maybe I want to go off my girlfriends and look really cute. And what's kind of step one, two, three to to start putting that wardrobe in place? Yeah. So I love how you broke it down because what I do for my clients is I call their their lifestyle. It's like styling their lifestyle. So then we have to break it down. What is your lifestyle? Are you, you know, CEO full time or are you full time mom and CEO of your household? Um, so it's asking yourself, what do you need to dress for? What are those events? And I call them events. And when I say events, it doesn't mean just that special event that's, you know, the Oscars gala <laughs> watching party, but it's your everyday event. So you have to ask yourself, what are those events that you're dressing for? Do you have to show up at work as CEO and, you know, project that level of confidence? Or are you full-time mother and CEO of your household and running all of your, you know, children's events and everything? Or to your point, after the children are gone, you're empty nesters. So it's defining your quality of life on your terms and asking yourself, how do you want to dress for your day? Whom, do you, whom are you showing up for? Whom do you need to impress, inspire, but also dressing for yourself first? So the way I like to look at a wardrobe is, okay, what is that where to work capsule wardrobe? What are those fun, you know, dinners or date night part of the wardrobe? What's vacation, resort? That can be very different. That's where you can like, right. woo, have your fantasy <laughs> hour. My clients, I mean, here in New York City, my clients that work in corporate wear black, baby gray. I try to get them to wear color, a little bit outside of that, deep jewel tones. But then once I plan their vacation, it's like, wear what you're not wearing every day. That's the time right. to wear the, the two-piece bikini, or that's time to wear the long, flowy maxi dresses or prints. So it's really asking yourself what you're dressing for. What are those events? And in terms of who you are, your profession, your area of expertise, ask yourself, what is that image you want to project to the world? What do you want people saying about you and your, we call it your personal brand? 
Do you want to be recognized as bold, creative, confident, composed, sophisticated? This is what I do with my clients before I style them for their photo shoot. I ask them, what is that image you want to project? And then how can we pull together a wardrobe that's going to reflect those defining words, your style statement? Right. And I imagine you have different, you could have different styles for, like you said, your work style, you're going out with your girlfriend's husband style, and then your vacation style could be yes. very different. Absolutely. And it is, um, to what you mentioned before, I use this too, is it's not just a look, it's a feeling. So is, you know, were you doing fast fashion for a while and that felt fun, but now are you ready for some investment pieces? Are you ready to invest in a beautiful leather handbag? Or is it time to invest in uh, a beautiful statement piece, whether it's a signature watch or a designer bag or investing in beautiful, you know, leather shoes? I always suggest um, at our age to invest the pieces of the wardrobe to invest in are that coat, bag, boot, or shoe, and our jewelry. Those are investment pieces that become timeless. A gorgeous, you know, Cartier watch or beautiful gold hoop earrings. You'll have those for the next 10, 20 years. It's a more timeless style. Yeah. I will say, though, pay attention to the trends because we don't want to look dated and we don't want to wear, you know, what we're wearing 10 years ago or in the 90s, even though the 90s are back. That's for the kids because we've already been there. So it's important to just keep updated with the trends. Right now, it is a little bit more um, clean and sleek, layered jewelry, gold hoops. It is investing in those higher quality quality luxury items. But it doesn't mean you can't mix it with what I call high-low shopping. I can find a fabulous dress <laughs> at Zara, but I'll wear my fun you know, Louis Vuitton New Wave bag because I'm here in New York City and our designer bags are a statement and it's... It, there, it is an impression that we give with what we're wearing. So that's what I would say at our age. It's time to think about what those investment pieces are for yourself. It's about making more with less. But it's also about daring to try a little something new. And like to your point, you're still wearing your two piece. I'm wearing shorts. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I could actually wear shorts at 51. I've always been self-conscious about the cellulite. But if they're the right cut and the right length. But again, know yourself. Um, wear what links feel confident and beautiful. As a fashion designer, when I was doing fittings, Christina, I believe there are certain lengths that are just timeless, just grazing the knee or just cut <laughs> to the shoulder. Some women get less confident with the shape of their arms, so why not wear a short sleeve or three-quarter? Clothing is here to balance our figure from head to toe, and clothing is here to to dress to express all sides of ourselves, Christina. I mean, I you just came back from a African safari. You're not wearing on that safari what you're wearing on this no. interview today, right? <laughs> no. So no, use I... fashion and style to play and experiment and dress to express all those facets of the woman that you are. And I love when you talk about high-low fashion. So many years ago when I started speaking, probably 10 plus years ago, I invested in two pairs of shoes, black patent leather and a cream patent, Stuart Weitzman, $500 each. It was the most expensive thing I have ever bought in my life. To this day, because I take care of them, I put them in the shoe bags, I put them back in the boxes, I have never had to buy another pair of heels. They are the most comfortable shoes that I own, and they're big heels. I can wear them most of the day walking around. But if you add it up, if you had bought a $50 pair of black shoes every year and tan shoes, I paid for them 10 times over. So yeah. I love when you try, and especially like a coat, you know, a nice, depending on where you are, Chicago, New York, DC, you're going to have like a nice wool coat that you have in the winter. And, but that's it, it. And you can make the low pieces look high with the right high piece. Like I love merging and mixing my fashions that way too. Tell me about what you think about. Um, I have a, a really, really good girlfriend and her daughter is um has a blog and very well known for sustainable fashion. So tell me what you think. Cause again, at our age, and I'm not saying I don't, I don't want hate mail. It's not that I'm not sustainable. It's just, I didn't grow up with that. We didn't grow up with that. This is kind of a new concept for our age. You know, what can we do to, to kind of get on that and, and be 
fashionable but sustainable at our age. Yeah, no, it's it's a really good point to put up uh, to bring up because in all my years as uh, my eighteen years as a fashion designer, we were very specific um, about the fabric that we chose, where we produced. We actually made um, it was for a designer, Donna Degman. And we made a lot of the clothing right here in New York City. And I was in charge of choosing the fabric, you know, natural fibers, et cetera. And now to your point, we're 20 years later, um, sustainable practices, designers like Eileen Fisher have been doing it all along. Um, Really? Natural fibers. Yeah. Natural fibers, organic fabric. But I think what, what happens, and I agree with you, like, we can't tomorrow all of a sudden decide we can't buy any polyester or no faux leather. It's kind of like when you decide, like if one decides to go vegan or vegetarian, there might be or pescatarian or anywhere on that spectrum a rainbow. It's hard to just go, okay, every single thing I'm going to purchase in my closet will be sustainable, meaning the fabric was produced sustainably. The... um you know, the factory workers were treated, treated ethically, but there is, there are more and more brands like, um, Everlane, my friend Yancy Fugal, there are, there is more access to these sustainable brands. So I, the way I look at it is just start to learn. Instagram is a great place. You see, um, beautiful handbags, leather goods, and shoes coming from Spain, Italy, Portugal, that are sustainably produced. I have another, oh my gosh, I should introduce you to her, uh, Christina, a friend of mine. She just, she spent years and now she's invented leather from mushrooms and she is the first like sustainable booty. It's a leather booty, but it's like mushroom leather. I have to try it myself. But I think it is important because, you know, with the planet, we all have to take our individual Mm -hmm. parts. So I don't say it's like, oh, my gosh, get rid of everything in your closet. It's it's actually twofold. One, it's looking for brands that are either organic or sustainably produced or made in smaller batches. Everything from sourcing cashmere from smaller batch farms um, in Ireland and Scotland. There's some great uh, cashmere brands that are sustainably produced. Also, a sustainable wardrobe includes designer consignment. And designer resale shops. You don't yeah. always have to buy a brand new Chanel bag or a brand new Louis Vuitton bag. The resale and designer consignment market is at an all time high. That's another way to blend and start to build and integrate sustainable fashion and sustainable choices with sometimes, I admit it, I find the best t shirts at Old Navy for summer. <laughs> I you know, and I'll wear them over and over. But I do, after my t-shirts get a little dingy, I'll take them to the local fabric recycle. So it is something to keep in mind. But like you, Christina, oh, it's one well, step that, at a time. What is a fabric recycle? Oh I've never my heard goodness. That. Yes, you can recycle fabric. So if you Google it, you'll Lord. find places online where you can actually ship them a box. At a certain point, t-shirts, certain items get even yeah. too dingy for like a goodwill. So you can ship them into fabric recycling places. They break them down and they'll produce, oh my gosh, they'll use them for different, to produce different items from those. But then you know they're not ending up in a landfill. I live in Brooklyn. So at the farmer's market, we have a couple of uh, fabric recycling. You just bring the bag, they take it away, and it becomes uh, use in fibers for other recycled products. Wow. They say you should learn something new every day, and that's, I've never heard of that. I'm definitely going to look into that, because you do. You get to a point where, you know, we're starting to clean out closets. It's like, it's time to simplify, and there are things that have been there too long that really, like you said, don't fit for goodwill, so this is a fabulous tip. Thank you. I was so excited. Um, Okay, let's go back to our closet. What are the staple pieces? What does every woman over 55 need to have in our closet. Yeah. And again, it depends on the climate, right? Here in, yeah. New, here in New York, we've got four definitive seasons. If you live in Arizona, it's 100 degrees right, right. all year round. Um, but really, a great fitting pair of pants or jeans. Would I put my clients in a slightly higher rise jean? 
all of a sudden they're like, oh my gosh, why didn't I realize this before? My tummy has gotten a little softer as I age, whether it's from menopause or what have you, <laughs> as we, you know, our bodies change. But a great fitting pa- pair of jeans, a slightly higher waist, it helps to mm-hmm. kind of smooth out. Right now, um, straight leg, palazzo, and wide leg have become back on trend. Yeah. Um, I still wear a skinny jean now and then. I like, if I'm wearing a skinny jean on the bottom, I like to go looser on top. Or if I'm wearing a wide leg on the bottom, I like to go a little bit more fitted on top. It makes a nice proportion. Um, but a great fitting, fitting pair of jeans. Uh, dark denim for work, a more faded blue jean for weekend. Um, it's kind of like these five core pieces, right? The jean, the quintessential t-shirt. I think every woman needs a great leather jacket or a leather bomber. A leather jacket or leather bomber, you can dress that up. When I went to Paris last year, I dressed it up with like my black t-shirt dress with my black heels when I went out at night, but then I put it with my t-shirt jeans and sneakers for day. Um, We're also in this new wave and age of flats, sneakers being fashionable. So I think for women, finding a really fun pair of what I call like street sneakers or city sneakers. They're not your gym workout sneakers. Yeah. Um, finding ones that are really sleek, very chic. You can wear them with t-shirt dresses. You can wear them with your jeans and a really beautiful go-to dress. I mean, the LBD, the little black dress yeah. that never goes away. One that fits your figure that again, you could like throw a jean jacket on top of it to dress it down, or you can dress it up for evening. Um, and then from there, it's like, it runs the gamut, but I think those core, oh, and a great updated blazer right now, the boxier blazers are on trend. I like the ones that have just a little shape or nip at the waist. Um, a great camel jacket or camel blazer, Veronica beard. All my clients are like, Ooh, ah, when they get their first Veronica beard jacket, they feel like they've arrived. Um, so leather bomber, uh, blazer. Great fitting tea, white t shirt tee. Oh, and in Paris, Christina, when I was in Paris, I learned how to style my button down white shirt. So, Ooh. whether it's silk, whether it's rayon, whether it's cotton, just a quintessential white shirt, you can wrap mm-hmm. it in the front, wear it over jeans, you can pop it over a dress, you can wear it casual and out. So, I would say those are some really great for timeless classic pieces that you can then put your own flair on love that and and what do you th- feel like at our age do we follow the trends like when you get your style trend or do you just kind of keep that core that you have in your closet you know mix and match a little Sh- should we be jumping on trends at this age or should we just you know let the younger women do that yeah i always say translate the trends and that's what right. I do through my Instagram, through my newsletter, through my styling p- tips. It's always through translating the trends that are right for you. Christine, I have to share a story. When I was uh, re- when I first launched my business and was researching fashion over 40, mm-hmm. there was a YouTube video by a woman who was clearly over 40. And she was talking about the runway trends. And she was like, so the runway trends this year are... Like the matching head to toe denim suit. And then she was like, I'm not going to be wearing that, but it's the trend. And then she kept going down the trends and it was like mini skirt. I'm not going to be wearing that. What? <laughs> you know, exposing your yeah. ballette or whatever. I'm going to. And I'm thinking, why is she doing a trend report in this way for women over 40 when she herself yeah. isn't going to be wearing them? So it's a very good question you're posing, Christina. So it's important to pay attention to the trend. For for we women over 50, we want to stay relevant. We want to look modern. Yeah. We don't want to look, you know, aged or dated. We don't want to look out of date. But ask yourself, is that trend right for me? Is it right for my lifestyle? Is it right for my body type? Like, just put it through a filter. Um, but the trends are here to inspire us to also dare to try something new. And that's my job as a stylist is... When the trends come out, I try them myself. The newest one are these short suit sets. So a longer mm-hmm. blazer with a short. I tried one on and I said, I didn't realize my legs were still in pretty good shape. 
I love the short suit set, but on other clients, they're like, Ooh, Tanya, I'm not confident showing my legs. I will, I will not wear that trend. So to right. your point, the trends are here to inspire, to keep us looking fresh, modern, relevant, but just use a little discernment. Translate them for yourself and see if they're right for you and your lifestyle. Excellent advice. Uh, so I have a couple questions to ask you, but before I do the end of our podcast, you do have such great information that you give out. So tell people how they can get your style tips and where to find you on Instagram or anywhere else on social. Yeah, excellent. So if you're a woman over 40 and you're looking to rediscover, reinvent your style or just do a refresh, you can always reach out to me for a free discovery call through my website, sterlonstyle.com. I also post relevant styling tips, especially for women like us, 40 and up, um, on my Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. It's all at Sterl on Style. So it's S-T-E-R-L-O-N-S-T-Y-L-E. Awesome. And everything will be in the show notes. So anyone can just look at there and click on it. Uh, okay. The same questions we ask of every guest. Uh, what is your greatest accomplishment since you've turned 50? I think turning 50 is my greatest accomplishment. Oh, ah, there you go. I love that. Oh, my gosh. Um, so I turned 50 last year. I'm 51. And I launched what? Sterl on Style when I turned 40. So I would say my biggest accomplishment, in addition to turning 50, making it to 50, woo, um, is the 10-year anniversary of launching my own business. I had worked full-time in the fashion industry for 18 years. I loved it. It was crazy. It was a roller coaster. It was uh, long hours, but so satisfying. I look back and the experiences I got were amazing. Um, but turning 50 was also the year 10 of my business. And knowing that I had this passion and this purpose and that I could turn it into a thriving business that then... You know, I've styled women running for political campaigns. I've styled one of the few women, black women in the that runs an international cybersecurities firm. I styled Cindy Ashton for the, you know, Oscars Awards uh, gala. So it's been, it's interesting because I feel like my accomplishment are my clients' accomplishment. When yeah. I've styled my clients and they've run that successful campaign or they've stepped in that stage and delivered that TEDx talk, their accomplishment is my accomplishment. So I'm just having a moment here, actually, Christina, that if I hadn't pursued this 10 years ago, it's come full circle and look at all the women who I've empowered with style for them to show up in more of their power, their presence and go out and pursue their dreams. So for me turning 50, it all came full circle. Me being able to thrive that business yeah. and give back and empower others. That is fantastic. What you should feel really great about that today. Now that you just said it out loud. Uh, okay. And then where do you see yourself in 10 years? Where do I see myself in 10 years? I'll be 61. So it's interesting because this is in relation to yes, myself, but also in relation to myself and my husband, we're married, no children. My husband's a firefighter, and he's going to be retiring in the next uh, few years. So we've I, talked about it, and we really see ourselves traveling the world. From me. now till 61 and beyond, we want to, my gosh, just see the world, live in different locations, um, experience different cultures, and really, really travel and see the world. I love that. And that will just help you grow, too, so that's... That's amazing. Tanya, thank you so much for joining us today. It was This was so great. And I hope that everybody listening, just if, even if you just take one thing away from this to fix up your closet a little bit. And if you want some extra help, definitely reach out to Tanya. Thank you, Christina. Thank you.